My pleasant good morning to those of you who are joining us live on Facebook and those of you who are on YouTube. We do greet you today in the name of our Lord, Savior, and soon coming King, Jesus Christ. And blessings to those who are in church. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. A special blessing go to the St. James Pentecostal family. Those who are considered to be shut in, so they are unable to come and those who are unable to make it at this time, we do greet you and bless you. And those who are in church, I want to invite you to stand with me as we begin our service this morning. We make a declaration and we say this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Thank God for another opportunity whereby we can be found in his house to lift up his name to worship and to magnify the Lord who is a faithful God. Amen. As we begin, I want to ask those who are on Facebook to um, share with someone. Those of you who are in church, you could probably go on your phone and share with your family members or your friends. Um, we also want to um, encourage you to like our page, subscribe to us, so that um, when we are on, you can get the live, um, the notification that we are on or we have posted a video, what have you. So I want to encourage you to do that. Let's go before the Lord in prayer today as we lift up the name of the Lord. Dear gracious and merciful Father, once again we bow in your presence. We thank you, O oh God, for being our God, our source, or everything. Thank you for waking us up this morning, setting us on our way. God, we are thankful that we could be found in your house. We enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. We thank you for being our God, our source, our everything. God, we pray that you will meet us today at the point of our need. Those who are on God on Facebook or YouTube, that Father, you will meet them at the point of their need, that the power of God will move, go through this broadcast, and God, touch hearts and lives, that the anointing of God will so empower and strengthen. We take authority against every plan, every strategy, every influence of the devil. We say, let God arise and let the enemy be scattered. And Father, we thank you for victory in Jesus' mighty name. And everyone say, Amen. 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 Well, we thank God. It's a pleasant good morning again to those who are joining us a little later. We do greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let me encourage you once again to... to Start a watch party, um, invite a friend, and um, post it on your timeline that somebody could be a part of the service and enjoy the blessing of the Lord. Amen. We want to invite our worship ministers as they lead us in worship at this time. God bless you. this morning God we bless your name and God we thank you God for being a good father thank you for being a good God thank you for being faithful unto us dear God we thank you for your love this morning that is new every morning God we thank you for your grace that is new every morning God we thank you God for the air that we breathe God the life in our beings this morning god that with this very breath god we can bless your name we can worship you we can call upon your name we can give you the worship we can bless you we can magnify your name jesus you are worthy of our praise this morning hallelujah hallelujah so this morning we just want to sing hosanna in the highest we want to lift up his name this morning because he's de so deserving of every praise this morning. Hallelujah. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we lift up your name.
name and worship him this morning. Hallelujah, God. You are a reason of hope this morning. You are our strength this morning. We worship you and we lift you up this morning. Hallelujah. Let our king be lifted up this morning. Hallelujah. Let our king be lifted up this morning. Lord, we worship you. Hallelujah. We give you the praise, Lord. Oh, we magnify your name. Wherever you are, can you just lift your hands before the Lord? and sing unto him Hosanna in the highest
magnified, Lord. Be magnified, God. Be magnified, Lord. We worship you. We bless your name. Oh, we give you glory. We give you the honor. We give you the praise, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God is indeed awesome. He is indeed wonderful. Hallelujah. When we magnify him, our troubles and our problems look small. Hallelujah. So this morning, I want to encourage you. Be magnified. Magnify the Lord in your life. Magnify your God in your homes this morning. Hallelujah. This time, we want to welcome our pastor. So put your hands together as we welcome him this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. We thank God this morning for another wonderful time of worship. Just being in the presence of the Lord. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. And we thank God for just being in his house. Amen. Those of you who are in church, you want to, amen. Just turn to your neighbor and let your eyes smile. And you probably give them an elbow, nod your head as you say good morning. And when you're finished, you may have your seats. Amen. That's a good morning again to all of you who are visiting with us. Those of you who are with us for the first time or long time. And those of you who are joining us live on Facebook and then later on those on YouTube. We are certainly delighted that you have taken the time to be a part of our service at St. James Pentecostal Church. God's richest blessings to you. Amen. We do want to encourage you to share with your family members and your friends to also take some time and, and like our page, subscribe to us, um, um, press that notification um, button there so that when we are on, you can get the notification and be a part of what God is doing on this part, at the, in this part of the vineyard. Amen. I, I want to just share with you um, in terms of some of our membership and to say to you that we have prayer on Monday and Friday on the Zoom platform from 6 p.m. We have prayer continues and then on this coming Tuesday we have that financial literacy session also um, 6 p.m. on the Zoom platform. Amen. So you don't want to miss any of these midweek activities all on the Zoom platform. And those of you who are viewing um, online, we want to encourage you to come and visit our church. We have service every Saturday evening at 6 p.m. in the evening, a dynamic Saturday evening service. Um, sometimes it reminds me of our deliverance service. Um, it's a powerful time of ministry on the Saturday evening. And then we have a 7 a.m. Sunday morning service where um, those of us who like to come early and leave early, uh, so we have that 7 a.m. service and then the 9 a.m. service where we also are live um, on, on Facebook. So we do want to invite you to be a part of one of those services, Saturday 6 p.m. in the evening, Sunday morning 7 a.m. or 9 a.m. And you can be a part of any one of those services. There is nothing like being in the house of the Lord, being in church, where you're not just reading it on a screen. And then when, you know, somebody gives you a call because it's on your phone or something, you know, your screen light up. But it's just being in the house of the Lord where you're focused. You can lift your hands and you're with the saints. Iron sharpening iron as we um, bless the Lord and magnify his name. At this time, we do want to go straight into the word of the Lord. And we have a minister, one of our ministers at the church, uh, Minister Michael Paris, who will come and he will share with us what the Lord has laid upon his heart. So I want to invite us to stand as we receive the young servant of the Lord as he comes to share what the Lord. Put your hands together and welcome him as he comes. What we want the Lord to do with him, use him mightily. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Thank you very much, Pastor. Good morning to everyone. I want you to turn with me to the book of Acts, Acts chapter 27. Reading from verse 22. 
to 25. Amen. And now I exalt you to be of good cheer. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God has given thee all them that sail with thee. Hallelujah. This morning I want to share with you on the topic a word from God. Father, we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. God, we thank you, God, that you are our God. We thank you, God, that we can cry and call out to you that you are our Father. Father, we pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you bless the hearts of your people. Touch us, meet us at the very point of our needs in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody say, Amen. You may have your seats. I just want to give you a, a little background of this entire chapter. Paul had appealed to Caesar standing before King Agrippa and Felix. And because he didn't want to pay a bribe, he appealed to Caesar. And thus, he is sent to Rome. Picking up this from verse 1, we saw that the beginning of the chapter started dealing with relationship and I want to tell us that relationship is good however there are some bad relationships and there are some good relationships there are some relationships that we should stay away from and there are some we should run into but Paul is being entreated by a Roman soldier a centurion now a centurion it's just not the name. It's a name of a person who is in charge of over a hundred soldiers. And this man treated Paul well. Even in Acts 24, 23, we saw how the treatment of Paul began. And it's just like God in treating with us in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 to 28, where God said he would bless us. And we have dominion over the earth. Within that scripture is the thread that holds throughout the Bible. Which speaks of God's covenant relationship with man. And because of that covenant relationship, God intended to save man because of sin entering into the garden. And we pick up with Paul now, now heading to Rome because of the gospel. And Paul declared unto them, because they stayed at a place, they reached at a place called Fair Haven. Now Fair Haven was a place that it was good to stay in, but it is not the best place to be in. I want to repeat that. It was good to stay in, but it was not the best place to be in. Now the place was like something like in Carnage where you have a little bay and boats could come, but in the winter time it was dangerous. There was no shelter. There was no place for the ship because they would have been tossed to and fro because of the storm. Now I want to remind us that in 2 Corinthians 11 and 5, that Paul had been on the seas many times in his journeys. And he had experienced the changing of seasons and the changing of times, being one who is accustomed to being on the seas. And due to that experience, Paul insisted that they stay where they were. But because of the determination of the soldiers and the owner of the ship, they decided to move to go to Phoenicia. Now, Phoenicia was a place not too far off. It was 40 nautical miles away. But I want you to understand that there are some times that we made decisions that are detrimental to our being. I want us to note that decisions are important because we live every day and we have to make decisions every day. However, how we go about making those decisions impacts our life. 
not just our lives, it impacts the lives of our loved ones. So Paul is telling them that if they move from fair haven, we will encounter some trouble. Paul insisted that they stayed, but they didn't listen. I want us to understand that sometimes we, we could talk and we say that we listen, but do we really hear? Or we hear, but do we really listen? We say that we understand, but do we really understand? Because of decisions we make impacting our lives, we stand on the threshold saying that if I only knew, I should have done it this way. And if I could be honest enough to say that even I myself had made decisions stating I could have done it another way. Or I could have done it this way. However, they made a decision not to listen to Paul. Not because that his situation put him in a place maybe he didn't have much influence. But his experience gave him that upper hand. But they didn't take the advantage. Brethren, I want to tell you, every advantage God gave us, take it. When you play tennis, they, they will say one up or advantage. Which means that the next point, if you win that point, you win the set. I want to tell you, take every advantage God has given to you. Don't let the advantage slip away. It may mean that you may lose, but Paul, in entreating to them, he told them that he perceived that this journey would be dangerous and would have hurt and loss. I want to let you know our walk in life, if we don't have Christ in our hearts, it will be dangerous for us. We may encounter hurt that we may not overcome. But Paul is saying to them that if you continue in your decision-making trend, it will be harmful. Let's pick it up. The warning Paul gave was not heeded. The harbor was not commodious to winter. However, the cry was to go to Phoenicia, not too far off. But the decisions they made were based on their own understanding. The Bible tells us to lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways to acknowledge him. I could recall King Jehoshaphat in 1 Kings 22 and 7 inquiring of God, is there someone who could tell us what God is saying? King David in 1 Samuel 23, 2 and 4, he himself inquired of God. I want to let you know that as brethren, we ought to inquire of God. We ought to find out what God is saying. We ought to understand what God is saying. Sometimes we look at a situation and because of our prejudgment of a thing, we say this is what it's supposed to be. But beloved, God is saying something else. So when we're making decisions, it ought to be based on knowing God, acknowledging God. It ought to be based on God's word, seeking the answers through God's word. Everything that God has given to us or pertaining to life is in his word. Everything that concerning us is in God's word. If you want to go, if you're romantic, check out the book of Ruth. If you're warlike and aggressive, check out the book of Joshua. If you're talking about laws, check out Leviticus. Everything, Solomon declared that there is nothing new under the sun. There is nothing you could be facing, no decision you could be making that has not gone before already. Another thing when we're making decisions, we ought to 
connect with God ministers. Too often times we, we tell ourselves that we cannot trust God's ministers. But I want to let you know in this house, you have trustworthy ministers. You have ministers who know God's word. Who integrity stands on God's word. I was listening to a message from, from a long time ago where a man was praying and asking God to fill him. And this old lady in the congregation saying, no, don't fill him, God, he leaks. I want to tell you that there is no leaking minister in this house. Don't fill him. Imagine him man praying, fill him, fill me, Lord, fill me. And there's a woman, God, don't fill him. Don't fill him, God, he leaks. He leaks. But the time and season, we need to understand. We need to understand when God is saying to us to go and when God is saying to us to stay. Sometimes we get the message mixed up. That's why relationship is important. I asked God a question because I looked and not just here but looked throughout Christianity and I asked God, I said, God, why it is our young people who grew up in church, by the time they reach the age of 15, 16, they are not in church. Now, that percentage could be about an 80%. Not everybody. But in prayer, it, it really touched my heart. And I asked God, God, why? Now, the Bible tells us that the, the mature ladies ought to take the younger ones under their wing and, and to teach them. To entreat them so that they wouldn't make mistakes or decisions that they have made that was detrimental, but they recovered. You see, sometimes they recover, but you may not recover. So it's important to connect in this time, in this pandemic time. Sometimes we play too much Lone Ranger, but every Lone Ranger has a tanto. Who is your tanto? Connect to somebody. Get a number. Too much of our young people are outside. They're crying. They're falling by the way. I want to entreat us. Get a number. We often hear pastors said, look around and see who you're not seeing. Get a number. This pandemic, there is loss. In this pandemic, there is hurt. In this pandemic, there is debt. Get a number. Connect with someone. Allow someone to help you. Paul, they went along on their trip. They found a, a ship, a goods ship that is going from Alexandria to Rome. And I want us to understand that what was inside the ship ought to have our attention. It was a goods ship carrying grain. And I want to ask a question to us. What is your content? What is inside of you? What is in the depths of your being? Sometimes we could show what is on the surface. It is easy to show with a little smile and a, a little thing and, and, and we fake things at times. But on the inside, there are some things we say, I can't let Michael, if they only know this Michael come out, people ain't going to want to be my friend. But God is not saying that we ought to hide. God wants to deliver us from those things. What is on the inside of us? What is your content? I want to ask a series of questions. What is your purpose? Paul's purpose was to go to Rome so that the gospel may be preached and heard in Rome. What is your purpose? We've come in a ministry, we sat down in a ministry, we fellowship in a ministry, but you still haven't found your purpose. You still don't know what God has called you to do. I want to entreat you today. Find out. Entreat God. Ask. Ask his servant. And when you understand what God is calling you to do, do that what God is calling you to do. Because it's the thing that we do for God, that is what is going to last. A 
Apart from them going into the ship, a tempest came up. I want to tell us that apart from the pandemic, we only seen the pandemic, but there are some things that are coming up in our lives. There are some things that are approaching us in our lives, confronting us in our lives that are detrimental. There are issues. There are situations that we're facing right now that God saying to us that is going to cause us harm that is going to cause us some distress and the tempest came up but they started out this looks in terms like an allegory when we see it reflects or symbolize actual life and eventuality but we can pinpoint it because a Christian life it's like that. One minute, things are nice. The Bible said that they had smooth sailing. Things was going good. And after a while, storms came in. After a while, husband gained trouble. After a while, children gained trouble. After a while, wife gained trouble. Only thing I would have forget the wives. My wife probably don't need back. Can't forget. Can't reach me. And it shows, because when you're facing a storm, there are strong winds. In the midst of a storm, there are strong winds. Winds are in excess of how many hundred miles per hour to blow off rooftops. How many rooftops have been blown off? We're going through and we say, God, I nearly lost my mind. I nearly lost. I nearly lost my praise. I nearly lost it all. If it had not been for God, because God knows what we're going through. He is touched by the very feeling of our infirmities. You don't have to tell God, but God knows. But God wants us to come to him. You don't think God knows that the cupboard is empty? You don't think God knows that you don't have any money in the wallet? You don't think God knows that you're having issues on the job? You don't think so? That God knows that you're having issues in school? God is aware of everything that concerns us. He wants us to reach out to him. Reach out to him. Take some time and reach out to him. Being tossed to and fro. Being sick and tired. Of being sick and tired. Imagine you're on a ship and a storm hit. I don't want to go to the washroom because the washroom will be nasty with vomit. Sick and tired, we often say. Enough is enough, we often say. But what are we doing? Yes, we, de we, we are declaring enough is enough. But there's an action must follow. Contrary winds. Blowing. Hopelessness. Despair. Discouragement, man's extremity, man's weakness is God's opportunity. But oftentimes we don't allow him to come in. He's knocking. But I want to declare to you that Paul declared while going through, he said, An angel of the Lord, stand by me this night and declaring unto me a word from God. I want to tell you there's a word from God in every situation that we're facing. There's a word from God in every circumstance that we are facing. There's a word from God in every position that we are in to direct us. God said, his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. He want to bring us to an expected end. God loves us. That is why he sent Christ, that we might have life. In Genesis chapter 12, in verse 12, chapter 15 and verse 12, God cut the covenant with himself because he knew a man was unable to upkeep his end. That's why ensuring the covenant continuity with Jesus Christ, that is love. That is love. Paul said that God stood by me. He stood by me. 
In other words, God is with you. God is with us. Say, neighbor, God is with you. Come on, you got to talk to your neighbor. Say, neighbor, God is with you. You see, some of us may not believe it. Some of us may not understand it. But God is with you. He makes a way where there seems to be no way. He brings us out, out, out of tough situations. That when we think that we would not overcome, God overcame. He said, be of good cheer. Don't be dismayed. Don't be discouraged. Be of good cheer. I want to let you know that you ought to be encouraged. Because when God stood by him and standing by you and give you a word, don't be despair. Don't be discouraged. God is making a way. He's going to bring you out. Daniel, when he stood in the lion's den, he stood in the lion's den praising God. He stood in the lion's den praying unto God. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, when they were thrown into the fiery furnace, they stood king. The king declared, I see a fort man. They were praising God. When Paul and Silas were in prison, they started to praise God and the place shook. I'm telling you, God is going to shake those things that hold us. There is a release that is coming. Chains are going to be broken. Fetters are going to be broken. Tombs are going to be open. Things that you think was closed, they're going to be open unto you. God is able. God said he stand by you. Be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. Brethren, Paul reminded them. He reminded them. He said, if you had only listened to me. If you had only listened to me. And he let them know that God, my God. God, the God who I serve. The God who my life is entreated to shall make a way. And he said that to encourage them because God gave Paul a word. He said, all those that are in the ship, all those that are connected to you, all those that are associated with you, all those who are wronged you shall be saved. You've got to understand what God is saying. But the, the, the wind took them and changed their direction because they were heading to Phoenicia, which was on the southwest coast. The southwest coast. But the storm came and took them in a northerly direction. See, sometimes God will change your direction. We got to watch the things that will take us away from God. We got to understand that there are signs and there are seasons that are coming. There are circumstances that are coming that will want to take us away. What is occupying your time? What is occupying that space that is allotted to God? prime time television when you have a slot from 7 to 8 where you know everybody's watching the news they call it prime time what is taking your prime time away when we ought to be praying when we ought to be studying God's word when we ought to be before God's face things are taking us away we are living in a time where this pandemic is creating loss Businesses are closing down. Churches are shutting their doors. People are home on half pay. Some people don't know where the last dollar is coming from. Hurt and distress. But God is saying, what is holding your attention? You ought to allow him to hold your attention. You ought to allow him to hold your hand. You ought to allow God to take you through this. Paul said, I got a word. The angel of the Lord stand by me. Be of good cheer. The ship was running for 14 days. 14 days. And one sailor would, would shout out, land ho. And they took the fathom line in, in verse 28. 
Now the fathom, you're checking the depth. You're taking a song. It literally means hearing the land. To determine the depth of the water. Which the sailor would tie a weight to a line and threw it overboard. And the depth which it sank indicate the depth of the water. From Father Isaiah, six feet. The Bible declared that when they first threw was 20. They went a little further. They threw again and it was 15. So we are starting off with multiplying 20 by 6, which is 120. And 15 by 6, which is 90. My friends, I want to bring it to your attention. It is in a descending order. You're moving from 120 to 90, which means you're getting closer to land. Which means you're coming into the shallow. But with God, God, God starts when in Ezekiel. He said Ezekiel saw where it started by the anchor. And then the water moves. It moves from the anchor to the knees. And from the knees to the loins. And then it was a river that he could have swam in. My friends, when we deal with God, God don't deal with ascending order. He deals with ascending order. What is taking you into the shallow? What is taking you? Things that never used to trouble you and bother you before. It is bothering you now. It is taking your time away from God. We're moving into the shallow where God is saying, into the deep. Launch out into the deep. God is able to keep us. He is able to keep what we have committed unto him. God is able. He holds us in his hands. He is more than able. The Bible declares that if we are at the depths of the sea, he is there. Wherever we make our bed, God is there. Do we acknowledge him? Do we acknowledge God? But I want to bring this thing to a close. Because God said he sent a word. There is a word from God. The Bible said in verse 33 and 34. And while the day was yet coming. Praise. Paul besought them. Take some meat. Brethren, I want to tell you, take some meat. Take some meat. Take some meat of the word. Don't go on milk any longer. We're in a time and, and a season where milk is not needed. Take some meat. The strong things of the word. Time to get down into the word. The depths of the word. Not the breaking of day. The breaking. The breaking of day. There is a dawning of a new day. Where the storm. Where the storms would be over. Praise. Where the storms would be over. And the day is breaking. Signifying a newness. Signifying that all the troubles, all the pain would pass. I want to let you know that there is a breaking of a new day. There is a breaking of a new day. God is taking it and turning it around. So that we will be able to come out of this victoriously. We'll be able to come out of this. Being more than conquerors. While the day was yet breaking. Signifying that God is in control. I want to let you know that God is in control of every circumstance and situation that we are facing. Those that are here stand with me. breaking of a new day the moving 
of storm clouds. Getting to a place where God has our attention. And the sun is about to rise. And the rays are beaming through. And there's a sound. There's a sound coming from God. There is a wave that is coming and flowing from God. That we ought to get on board with what God is doing. We ought to understand what God is doing. For he said, the angel of the Lord stood by me. And he said, be of good cheer. Weeping may only endure for the night. But I want to let you know that joy comes in the morning. What you're going through is but for a time. But God is able. God is more than able to bring you through. The anchor holds. I want to let you know the anchor holds. Some looking to throw in the towel and give up. The anchor holds. In the midst of the storm. Brethren, lift your hands. Those are here and those who are watching over YouTube. Raise your hands throughout this house. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word. That in spite of the storm, in spite of all the winds and, and things that are blowing around us, that God, you're able to keep us. God, you're able to keep us. You're, you know, God, what is in our heart. And God, you know how to keep that which belongs to you. And we give you thanks and praise. Put your hands together as I pass the mic back to our pastor. God bless you. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we thank you. God, we thank you. Thank you. That God, you're not a silent God. You're not a dumb God. But your God who speaks a word, a word in season, a word of life, a word of victory, a word of blessing, a word of breakthrough, a word of healing, a word of deliverance. Hallelujah. God, we say thank you for being our God that speaks a word in season. God, you have spoken. Be of good cheer. You have spoken. Don't be afraid. Oh, God, we have gotten a diagnosis. We have gotten, oh, God, a negative report. But, God, we hear that word. Be of good cheer. God, we thank you that, God, you are God and you are in control. That you are the miracle-working God. You are the God who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think. And, God, we ask, oh, God, God and we believe and we trust you and we hope in you because you are our God and you are a faithful God. So we take authority against every negative word, against every negative experience and we declare victory, we declare breakthroughs, we declare healing, we declare restoration, we declare reconciliation, we declare revival in the name of Jesus and God we say thank you. Thank you, oh God. We thank you for the victory. Hallelujah. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. Oh God, we thank you. For God, even as your servant was speaking, and he's referred to those children who have grown up in church, oh God. Oh God, children who are distracted by God, this world and its world, the activities and pleasures. God, we stand in the gap for children. God, there's a mother, there's a father. Oh, God, who is agreeing with me today. Who is saying, God, my son, who grew up in church, my daughter. God, who once uh, used to worship and serve you. God, we bring them before you this morning. We cry out on their behalf. God, we ask that God, that the convicting power of the Holy Spirit, that God so 
will convict their hearts and break strongholds in their lives in the name of the Lord Jesus. God, we break every stronghold. We declare salvation this morning. God, hallelujah, Paul says, uh, God, your word to Paul was that none shall be lost, all shall be saved. God, that word came that you shall not only save us, but all household. And God, we declare that word. We say like Joshua, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We declare salvation, God, to our children in the name of Jesus. And God, we thank you for saving. Thank you for saving that young man. Thank you for saving that young lady. Oh God, saving. Oh God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Thank you, God. Father, for those relationships. Oh God, with the husbands and the wives, we pray in the name of Jesus that God, even as your servant referred to that, we bring, oh God, those husband-wife relationships before you. We pray, oh God, that Father, you will meet them at the point of their need. Father, you see where the enemy has come in like a flood. But we pray this morning that your spirit will lift up a standard against every work, against every plan, against every strategy of the devil in the name of Jesus and we declare victory we declare deliverance in the name of Jesus and we thank you for doing this mighty work oh God we thank you for healing those who are sick within their bodies oh God there are people God all over the world who view view oh God this uh, this broadcast and we pray that God you will meet them at the point of their need we declare healing we speak unto every mountain of sickness and we declare the healing power of God that God according to your word that Jesus was wounded for our transgression he was bruised for our iniquity the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed we declare healing healing come on lift your hands you are sick within your body lift your hands you're in church or those of you who are in your home you're viewing in the name of Jesus we declare healing over your body right now in the name of Jesus whatever lump whatever pain ah, whatever weakness we remove it in the name of Jesus we speak unto you pain we speak unto you lump we speak unto you disease in the name of Jesus and we command you to be removed from that body right now in the name of Jesus and we declare healing right now in Jesus name let it be so God and we thank you for your miracle working power that is flowing this morning in Jesus mighty name we thank you and we honor you for doing it in Jesus' name. Come on, put your hands together and give the Lord a praise offering. Hallelujah. God, we thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is a miracle working God. And we thank God for his miracle working power. We want to lift the morning's tithes and offering. We want to give unto the Lord of our substance. I want to encourage you. Amen to give as the Lord will have laid it upon your heart. Oh, those of you who are members of our assembly who are viewing, uh, we have that account number there, that Republic Bank Limited account number, whereby you can uh, transfer in terms of your tithes, your offering. Um, there are those of you who may not necessarily be a member, but you want to partner with us as the Lord has place something within your heart to do we want to encourage you to do what the Lord has spoken to you to do as we give amen you cannot outgive God and we know that God is no man's debtor we do know that God is faithful and God who has spoken that word within his word will speak that word within our lives and will work a mighty miracle in the name of Jesus God we say thank you for the opportunity of God giving this morning, of giving of our tithes, of giving of our offering. We thank you, O oh God, for our love towards you. For God, we are not giving just for blessing, but God, we are giving because you have been good to us. You have been faithful to us. God, we give this morning because we understand that you are God and you are a 
faithful God. God, and we thank you that God, there are benefits of giving that your word declares that you will open the windows of heaven and you will pour onto us a blessing. So we thank you for the benefits of giving this morning that God, you will meet each one of us at the very point of our need. We thank you, God, for breaking generational curses as we give. Curses of poverty and mediocrity. God, your word has spoken to us as your people that we are the head and not the tail and we are above and not beneath and we come against that that word of negativity that have been spoken over our lives and that have, been, that have been governing us for all these years. We break that stronghold in the name of Jesus and we declare blessing upon the people of God that no individual who would give this morning will be worse off but God you will work miracles and your people will experience a supernatural in Jesus mighty name and we thank you for all these blessings. Amen. Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We want the worship ministers will come and lead us in a time of worship as the ushers will wait on us. And those of you who are online, we have that account number there that you can give online um, towards the ministry. God bless you, Rich. I have come to give back to you.
Lord, amen. We do thank God for his goodness and his faithfulness towards us. Truly, God is a faithful God. We want to sing the doxology as we close. Um, let me encourage you to have a great week and don't let the week have you. God bless you richly. And remember, God loves you and we love you too. Amen. We want to sing that doxology at this time. Praise God from a new